Okay, good evening geometry students. These are Thursday night's notes for Friday's class and tonight we will be discussing a topic that you have probably uh, spent a little bit of time back in junior high looking at and that would be the midpoint formula. So let's begin. Your objective today is the student will discover the process and applications of the midpoint formula. Again, these notes are for Friday. That would be September the 20th for your date on your notes. As always, press pause anytime you need more time and uh, hit play when you're ready to begin again. These notes are not long. They will not take us very long. We'll have a couple of examples to go over in class, but that will basically be it. Okay, a little bit of basic review here. Of course, remember that any location in a two-dimensional coordinate system has a coordinate. That is to say, it has an X comma Y, or an ordered pair, that describes its precise location. The graph that you see there before you is called the Cartesian coordinate plane. Okay, please notice that the x-axis is the axis that goes uh, left and right, the horizontal one, and the y-axis is the vertical. Also notice, if you have not uh, learned it yet, okay, we need to do it now, that the, the signs of the axes, going to the left is the negative x-axis, going right is the positive x. Going downward is the negative y, going upward is the positive y. Okay, and any point that we can put in two-dimensional space in that graph, it will line up somewhere with the x-axis and it will line up somewhere with the y-axis. Those two values are the x comma y that position that point in two-dimensional space. Okay. So what we're after today, <clears throat> and you're going to see this same language on several different formulas that we're going to use uh, throughout the year, Okay, for any two points, point 1 located at x1, y1, and point 2 located at x2, y2, for those two points, there exists a midpoint that lives exactly at the result of this formula. Okay, the formula says, basically, in plain English, the sum of the x values divided by 2 comma the sum of the y values divided by 2. Or, another way of thinking about it, is the average of the two x's, comma, the average of the two y's. Please copy the formula down, make sure that you get it right. And also, please notice, the formula comes with parentheses built into it. We'll talk about why that here in a second. And it also comes built in with the comma in there. So please do not omit any of those punctuation marks. They are extremely important to getting your answer right. Okay, here's a graphical representation of what the midpoint formula does. Okay, the formula said for any two points, point one and point two, where point one lives at some location, x1, y1, and point two lives at another location, x2, y2, that there exists a location exactly between those two points that can be found by using the midpoint formula that you just copied down. Okay, this is going to bring all of those synonyms that we've talked about here lately into play. Midpoint, bisected, equidistant. Those are all things that apply to the midpoint formula. Okay. <clears throat> now the final note on the formula is since it is midpoint, okay, the midpoint is a point itself. That means our answer to any type of a midpoint question should be an ordered pair. Okay. That is why the formula is in parentheses. Okay. For whatever reason, the tendency for students is when working with the midpoint formula, they manage to find a way to throw away the parentheses or throw away the comma, and that leads us to trying to add the x values and the y values together or some crazy nonsense like that, and that is not the, the answer. Our answer will not just be a single value. When you're asked about a midpoint, your answer will be an ordered pair, a point. Okay, so we're going to take a look at one example, and then we will see a couple of examples in class tomorrow, 
Okay, and I will show you those examples. So if you want to work ahead, you can absolutely do that. But let's work an example together first. Okay, find the midpoint between points 2 comma 3 and 4 comma 1. Okay. Now there's a couple of things that I'm going to ask you to do that you may not have been ever asked to do before. One, anytime we use any of these formulas that have all this x1, y1, x2, y2 stuff in there, what I want you to do is I want you to take your two coordinates, in this case, 2 comma 3 and 4 comma 1, and I want you to label them. They are labeled x1, y1, and x2, y2. Remember that each point, each ordered pair, gets an x and a y. So don't make the mistake of going x1, x2, and then y1, y2. Okay, so we're going to do this every single time we have a midpoint formula. We're going to label our points, x1, y1, x2, y2. Another thing that we're going to do that you're probably not going to like me for is every time we need the midpoint formula, we're going to write it down. Okay, so that means if we end up with 10 midpoint questions, you are going to write down the midpoint formula every single time. Now, I'm not having you do that because I want you to prove that you can write down the formula. I'm having you do that because I want all of the information to work the midpoint formula all sitting in one place. Our coordinates labeled with the x1, y1, and x2, y2. Our formula written down right there so that we're not jumping mentally from one place in our notes to another place or one place on our, our worksheet to another place, anything like that. We've got it all written down, so all you have to do is basically just plug in the information. Okay, so here we go. Let's plug in. The formula has parentheses built into it, so our next step will have parentheses. Inside of those parentheses, our formula says we have a fraction, and in the numerator of that fraction, we have x1. Okay, so what's our x1 value? It's going to be a 2 in this case. The formula says plus, okay, and the formula asks for the x2 value. So what's our x2 value? It's a 4. Then the for, uh, formula says to divide that by 2, so we will. The formula has a comma built into it, so don't lose that. Okay, then on the right side, the formula asks for, in the numerator, y1. What's our y1 value? It's a 3 in this case. And then the formula says to add to that your y2 value. What's our y2? It's a 1. And then the formula says to divide by 2. So all we're doing is plugging in the information from our labeled points into our formula. We've got all the information in one place. There's no excuse to plug it in incorrectly. Now all we have to do is simplify this mess. The rule on order of operations when you have fractions is to simplify the numerator as far as you can and then simplify the denominator as far as you can before dividing the numerator and the denominator. So obviously our numerators can be simplified here. On the left, 2 plus 4 is going to give us 6, and on the right, 3 plus 1 will give us 4. So that's our next step. Now that the numerators and denominators are all simplified, we can do the division. On the left side, what is 6 divided by 2? That'll be a 3. And on the right, 4 divided by 2 will be a 2. And there's our midpoint. Our midpoint lives at 3, 2. And please notice, the parentheses are still there. They have not gone anywhere. The comma is still there. Okay, All of that is needed in order to have an ordered pair which is what our answer is. Okay, that's the end of the notes. I'm going to let you go ahead and copy down the two examples that we're going to be looking at in class tomorrow. We will work them together, but if you feel like you've got the hang of it, go ahead and work them in advance. Okay, then you can just verify if your answers are correct when we do it in class. Okay, the next example is going to be, what is the coordinate of the midpoint of line segment AB? If A is at 0, 6 and B is at negative 3, negative 2. Now that's a little bit more wordy, sounds a little bit different. The question's coming at you from a little bit different angle, okay, but it's still a midpoint question. Okay, so if you want to give it a shot, you're going to label your coordinates x1, y1, x2, y2. You're going to write down your midpoint formula, and then you're going to solve your formula. Plug everything in and solve it out. 
The second example that we're going to look at in class tomorrow looks like this one. This one's a little bit different, but if you're feeling like you got a grasp on it, okay, you can go ahead and give it a try. This one says if B is the midpoint of line segment AC, then where is point C located at? Well, it doesn't take a genius to realize when you look in the graph, C is not even in the graph. Okay, but there is a line segment, according to the problem, that leaves A, passes through B, and heads off to a point C, and we are asked to determine the coordinate of point C. It is a midpoint type question, but they're angling it a little bit different, twisting it around on us. Okay, so copy those two down so you'll be ready for class tomorrow. That's the end of your notes. That's all you have. So I appreciate you tuning in and taking your notes. We'll see you in class on Friday.